Everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Gregor. Hello. Hi, Christian. How are you doing? So for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Yes, so my name is Gregor Sutty. Uh, I, you might be able to guess from my accent, I am from Scotland, so I live near Glasgow in Scotland. I am an Azure architect. I'm obviously an MVP, an MCT, and I'm an Azure architect for a company called Intercept in the Netherlands. That's me. We'll have to say that, uh, so first off, so more than 50% of my uh, line is uh, comes from the Glasgow, Scotland area. So oh, nice. Nice. Uh, it was good. actually supposed to be there and doing some uh, some research with my in-law and some of my uh, my uh, family members were going to go do some family research in the, in the area and things kind of changed and wasn't able uh, to make it out there. But uh, I love, love the area, been many times, but. Uh, cool, the next time you're out, give us a shout. Yeah, no, we'll do. Yeah. So my, my, it's funny. It's like my, my maternal grandfather, Richardson, it was like, we can trace back, I think 17 generations. Oh, wow. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. So pretty, pretty impressive. Then just stop. So that's my, uh, my <laughs> task is to go and find Probably. beyond that. So, well, let me, so for, for folks that are unfamiliar uh, and not that I know everything about the, in the Azure space, but <laughs> what, what areas of Azure is your specialty? Because that's such a broad area. And I'm sure yeah. Microsoft will get creative and break it apart and re recreate other, you know, uh, MVP sub areas within yeah. Azure. So what do you focus on? Um, so my background is mainly development. Uh, and that's not really my focus area, but my background is .NET. Well, actually, VB6 development, then .NET development. Then I became a dev manager, and then I got into Azure. So I'm coming. I'm coming to Azure from a development background, which is a lot bit different to most architects. Uh, so I'm not very good at networking. I'm more web apps, app services, function apps, all that kind of good stuff. But I've also got a data background as well. So sort of a SQL Server uh, back in the day. Yeah. So I've got data, AI, everything apart from really AKS, which I haven't really got into, and networking. These are the two areas that I don't do. So. Anything yeah. else that comes up at work, they can sometimes give me a shout and I'll, I'll jump on a call and help. But that networking is not my strong point. So my main main background is uh, development. You know, it's interesting. A lot of the people that I know that are kind of in that that space, you know, kind of came up through the networking desktop support, like that side yep. of things. Um, I worked in, so my prior life before Microsoft ecosystem. So back when I would work with IBM and other technology, it was in like software configuration management was actually the, you know, the, the, those tools I worked with rational software, if you remember oh, that. Yeah. Rational Rose, that, that space. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. In fact, we were the largest, my company, we sold the rational uh, back in 2001. We had the largest collection of free Rose and clear okay. case add-ons. Oh, yeah, so. those those take me back. I remember using them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of funny too. I, sorry, people going sideways here. That a lot of those people after IBM bought Rational, a bunch of those people in the SCCM space joined Microsoft. They didn't oh, stay okay. for very long, but there were a bunch <laughs> of big names, uh, you know, famous authors in that space that all joined to kind of help build kind of like the beginnings of Microsoft's DevOps journey, which. Honestly, I don't know where it kind of is or, you know, mm. I don't keep up on that space at all. Oh, I keep up on that space. That's my space as well, DevOps as well. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah very cool. Nowadays, it's, um, moving on from, so the team that built Azure DevOps kind of moved over to GitHub and they're all building GitHub Actions at the moment. Which is taken off, which is great. And and mm. uh, it, it's pretty broadly supported. Yeah, yeah. I don't pay much attention to what's happening outside of the Microsoft ecosystem. So not no, I mean, sure to be honest with you. Yeah. I've been a Microsoft fanboy all my days. So I couldn't really tell you much about anything else. Yeah. Well, that's ask me about AWS or anything like that. No clue. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, so, so what, what's kind of your, your, your passion topics, right? What do you do out in the community? What do you write about, speak about those kinds of things? Um, well, I just like helping people. So my big thing is helping people. So my big, the kick, the kicks that I get at the moment are helping customers. So I, my number one thing is probably a customer phoning me with something I've never seen before, like a rational rose problem that they need sorted and I, I'll come and fix it. So I get a kick out of fixing things that I don't really know anything about. 
do yeah. a wee bit of reading into it, do a wee bit of playing about it, try and learn it and then figure it out. So that's my uh, big thing at the moment. Doing a lot of bicep at the moment, so doing a lot of infrastructure as code for customers. Doing a lot of that. Um, my main job is basically helping customers who are either getting on board and into Azure or customers who are already in Azure and want to do something better, like maybe maybe sort out their environment or move from uh, maybe modernize their apps, that kind of thing. That's my big thing. Yeah. Modernizing apps is quite good fun. Yeah. Well, that, there's an endless job right yes. there. Yeah. And, <laughs> exactly. and often, often a thankless job. It's just mm-hmm. because they pile more on. Well, yep. it's, so what was what was your path to becoming an MVP? Like, how how did you get discovered? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I didn't actually, to be honest, I, I've been in IT for like twenty five years until about six years ago. I didn't really, I had heard the MVP, but I didn't really know what it was all about. And then yeah. I spoke to, I bumped into a good friend of mine called Kenny Lowe, who works for Dell, and he was telling me all about it. And I was like, oh, that's quite interesting. I, I need to look into that a bit more. And he, he kind of let the touch paper that kind of got me interested in it. And then I just decided, um, a lot of people say that MVP shouldn't be a goal. And I probably do tell people that, but I wrote up on, I wrote up on a bit of paper above my screen, MVP. And that was yeah. my goal. So yeah. that was my one and only goal when I got to Azure. I was going to like, I want to become an Azure MVP. So I yeah. decided to, how am I going to go about that? So my path was, I had to learn Azure as I was doing this. So as I was learning Azure, I decided I would blog the learning resources and the study material that I was using. And that, that became very popular. So I started off with doing the developer exams um, from having zero Azure knowledge and failing them and kind of blogging my journey of how we go about learning it all again and kind of the study methods and what not to do basically, because I was doing this in, in not a very clever clever fashion. So I then blogged about how to, how to do that. And then I think now I've got like 26 exams or something like that. So I've kind of did quite a lot. That's kind of how I started. Um, not really sure how I got found out about an MVP. Um, I kind of self-nominated just before that part changed. Oh yeah, yeah. For folks yeah. that don't know, they for there was a window. It yeah. was a short window where they allowed self-nominations rather than you know yeah. a Microsoft person or existing MVP, which is now it's what is back to. Yeah. So I self-nominated, waited about six months, and then they said that they're, they're getting rid of that, so I had to start the whole process again, which was fine. Uh, hey, but you got on the radar. Yeah, exactly. They knew yeah. who I was at that point, which was good. Um, and I was helping, I was helping with the Glasgow Azure User Group. I was doing lots of community stuff anyway. Yeah. So the one thing I would say is people shouldn't like. I, I know I'm kind of contradicting myself here, but you shouldn't really try to become an MVP. You should just earn the MVP as part of what you're doing. That's yeah. my yeah. kind of opinion. Well, but, that yeah, that's the the I, I, great guidance. It's 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 that's that balance. You have to surface the things that you're doing you've, yeah. you've got to make people aware of it and then but yeah. you've got to do it in a humble way <laughs> yes exactly yes i'm trying to be being humble is one of the key things i think i always put yeah. it down to like i was thinking about this this morning because i thought you might ask this like if you were if you want to win an oscar you don't think about wanting to win an oscar you probably just want to be a, a leading film star and then an oscar becomes part of the award of just being a good actor and being good films so if you're a good community person, the MVP thing will come along, but you, you shouldn't really just go all out for MVP. Yeah, except except that there are so many people, like I had this before I got nominated, where where people just assumed I was. Yeah. And guess this said like, wait, you're not an MVP? Oh, like, I've had you're that. doing all this people, stuff? Yeah, right. yeah. There's a few people I've nominated, and I was like, before that, I was like, well, you're not an MVP? I was like, oh, I need to sort that out, and then go off and nominate people. So Right. Um, yeah. I've also well, that, been quite lucky. I've nominated 20 people for MVP and 18 of them have become MVP. So that's quite good. That's quite good. Proud of that. Yeah, that's quite good proud numbers. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully the yeah. other one of the other people is going to become an MVP soon. That's one of those things where I, I've had people that have come up and said, you know, hey, could you nominate me or could you recommend me? And I've had some with a couple of them, some frank conversations like, like I don't, I don't see, I don't know enough about the stuff that yeah. you're doing. Like, here's what I'd have to go and see. And some of those yeah. people like never came back. I've, I've had some others um, that have come back and been persistent. I'm like, that's great. Yeah. Like keep doing that thing. And I actually had one, a good friend of mine who's now actually an MVP and an RD. So a regional mm-hmm. director um, who he said, you know, it's been my goal. So I've been trying for like three years. He says, I've just decided I'm going to stop trying. It's like, I don't, I don't care. Like I, I'm, I'm loving, like work is great. I'm yeah. doing the community stuff. I'm, 
passionate about this. If I get it, great, but I'm not going to try to get it. Yeah. And I kid you not, a month later, he that's, got his That's work. the mantra. I think you need to try and not try. You just do what you're doing and it'll come along. Yeah. Yeah. Because loads of people, I've had loads of people like like yourself reach out and you don't know them and you're like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to entertain people you don't know. But um, yeah, there was a lot of people like you, like what you were saying that I couldn't believe weren't the MVPs. I just assumed that they were MVPs and they're like, no, I'm not an MVP. And I'm like, okay, let's do something about that. And, yeah. You know, sort of... Well, that, that's why you've got to be, I, I don't know, be subtle about it. I mean, talk to friends of yours, like get to know MVPs, get to yeah. know Microsoft people. Um, but but it, it I do agree with you that if you're involved in, like wherever you live in the world, if you know um, your local Microsoft sales people, though, if there's an office nearby, if there's user groups, get involved with that stuff. If you become visible and are just out there doing stuff and speaking at and creating content and answering questions, because you don't have to speak at conferences and no, blog every day and create videos. No. There are still people that like block out time every day to go into Microsoft tech community or other, you know, uh, yep. uh, other you know areas that just answer questions. Exactly. And yep. like Discord, there's a huge community out there and people that just answer questions on Discord. Yeah. Yep. Well, there's many ways to do it. Yeah. I think some, I think a lot of people, get intimidated and think that they need to do public speaking. And I think that's a big, not really true. Um, I know a couple of MVPs who blog and, and do what you say, help out in the, the forums. And, and that's that's perfectly legit. You don't need to be any, a public speaker. I, I don't really do public speaking. So yeah, I think that's a bit of a mistake some people make. Well, that, yeah. that was like my main thing. I was because I was I, you're blogging occasionally, but a lot of my content was for my the company that I worked for 10 years ago. Um, and so for me, it was, thankfully, I had a company that would send me to the, all of these events and I was going to be there in the booth regardless. I just then submitted to every one of them and just slowly started getting picked up and people would see me and I'd speak more. But now, you know, in post COVID, like I'm fine with letting others, the younger mm -hmm. generation go and, and, and do that and <laughs> be the, be the travel jockeys and, yep. <laughs> uh, and do all that where I'm just doing stuff like blogging and content creation and, and yeah. interviews and, and promoting the community, that kind of stuff. And, yeah. you know, it's, I love doing this, this stuff. I'm still giving back to the community, I'm but told. I'm not standing up in front of as many crowds as any, yeah, no, that's, that's kind of where I'm doing the same. Yeah. I've kind of, yeah. Speaking isn't really my thing. So yeah, there's plenty of other opportunities. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, so uh, for folks that uh, you know want to get in touch with you, find out more, like what are the best ways to reach you? Where are you most active in the social um, realm? Most active is on Twitter. So it's just Gregor underscore Sutty. Um, I'm on Twitter quite a lot. Or LinkedIn. Uh, that's really it. I don't really use Facebook or anything like that. So yeah, definitely Twitter. Well, if you're not a grandparent, that's I keep getting hearing <laughs> that. So I, I do use Facebook a lot because I am a grandparent. So uh, I've, got but, yeah, <laughs> I've got got three littles but uh uh yeah but it, it's uh no but it, 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 what what's kind of your other uh other places your blog or other sites yeah, you have YouTube, yeah. you other content to point people at yeah youtube as well just uh gregor sutty and my blog is gregor uh i don't blog as often as i used to i used to blog quite regularly but more into youtube videos and content creation that way now kind of not really got started my YouTube channel. Done one or two courses. We've just finished an AZ900 course, which was good. So I need to do, I want to do more of that. My main thing, um, I had a previous boss who would always say that when you learn something, you should try and teach it to other people because you learn more and you're also yep. giving back. So that's my what? my main thing. I, I feel very lucky that I've been working for people at the company I'm at and my previous job where I was kind of mentored into teaching people and giving back. And I always want to do that. I think that's really quite important. So that's a big thing for me at the moment is doing courses to give back to people. Well, it's I realize that everybody has different learning styles and I, but I'm with you. Like I, I learned the most by, uh, by going through, walking through, organizing it, teaching it, you know, mm -hmm. speaking about talking about it, sharing that, and then getting that real world world f feedback. It's yeah. like, like you go back, like the, the networking stuff, it's, you're talking about hardening, you know, you're that network around you, yeah. you're hardening the content, you're Absolutely. building your confidence in that. And that's why I realize it's hard for somebody that feels like, Hey, I'm not an expert. Hey, look, there's nobody that is an expert on all things, no. you know, even within their space, even the yeah. most knowledgeable people on a topic 
will constantly talk about how they're learning, you know, and you learn because different industries, different users, different scenarios, different companies and partners and Definitely. all those experiences. But if you're writing about it, sharing about what you're learning about, then you'll get more of that input, that feedback yeah, yeah. from others. I've even learned to do something, blogged about it, and somebody said there's a better way. So, you know, you're getting you're getting win-win from other people as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Doing the AZ900 was really good because it, it, even just realizing that some people don't even know what a virtual machine is and you have to start from the very basics because we were kind of like going in at a too high a level, even though it was the AZ900. You need to remember that some people are like um, marketing people who want to do this for their job but don't really know anything about Azure. So you have to make sure that you your content is, is at the right level. So that was a learning curve, but it was a great learning curve. Yeah. Well, that there's another opportunity right there because what I find is usually there's like the 101 content and then it jumps right up mm -hmm. into advance. And there's often the greatest opportunity are for people like, I, I understand the core concepts, but ease me into the more yep. complex things. And that's where the, the greatest opportunity is. That's where most people are as well. Yes, definitely. Even for the... When you go to conferences, that's kind of where most of the, the content is. It's not really beginner. It's just above beginner, but it's not quite at the expert level. So, yeah, I would right. agree with that, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I just need to th think about what course to do next. Um, but I think the fundamentals is popular because there's a lot of people just trying to get into cloud and kind of, you know, data fundamentals is quite popular. Yeah. Um, all, the, all the containers and, and AKS fundamentals, all these fundamentals courses seem to be the most popular. Do you worry about, do you ever go out and look and say, Hey, I really want to write about this. Uh, I wonder, uh, you know, what else is out there? Go and do like some SEO analysis of a topic before you write something. Do you do no, that at all? No, I can't say that I have. I probably should do that. <laughs> um, no, I can't say that I do. I, I just know that the fundamentals, when I, when I did a LinkedIn learning course, I, I asked what's the most popular ones and they're saying the fundamentals exams ones are the most popular. Yeah. Which I can yeah. understand, especially... AZ900, just getting into Azure in general, that's yeah. where people start. So that's going to be big. Data fundamentals is quite big. Um, AI fundamentals now, obviously, is going to be huge. Yeah. I mean, builds coming up tomorrow and it'll be AI every second word. You know, it's going to be massive. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I just got I just got a, an abstracts uh, 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 accepted for a conference in August uh, on AI that I'll be doing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think if you're not doing any AI thing, you might not get accepted anyway. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's taking over the world. Yeah. It's interesting it's, because I, I was at Ignite in November and I was talking to this girl, Veronica, who's an AI MVP. And I said, there's nothing about AI. And she's like, no, I know. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden I, yeah. I said, you must be the busiest person in the world. She's like, yeah, yeah I am. It was really funny. I yeah. do, Did I make a mistake that I actually wrote the title of my, and my abstract, I didn't have AI created. Is that a failure right off the, the Well, I don't, I mean, I'm slightly concerned that people get fed up with, with all that stuff. You know, it's like yeah. when you're on, well, it's like every second post is about AI and chat GPT. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe something else might be the way to go. Well, my, my approach is that uh, like, I, I'm just looking around at what sessions are out there. I know what I'm interested in. And mm -hmm. so I, I found a, a title. It's like, I, I don't see a, a couple people writing around the yeah. broader topic around it. I'm yeah. just like, Hey, this is a niche and it's something that I'm actually doing and using. And, and so I'm looking at, it's a brand new topic. I'll be doing it for the first time at a conference in Australia in August. Oh, nice. um, but it's stuff that I'm going to, I'm looking forward to hearing people's feedback on my approach on the different things and, and strengthening that and changing that and come up with some other topics. So yeah, again, I'm looking at it as a learning tool as much definitely. as it is sharing what I've already learned. Yeah, that's interesting. I've got a topic in mind that's very similar. We've been doing some stuff at work and a lot of customers are like not doing this thing. And I'm like, yeah, there's not a lot of content out there on it. So definitely going to try and do some talks around that stuff and some, some courses. Yep. But that's uh well, and the reason I like, I don't do the SEO thing either around the topics. I write about what I want to write about. Yeah, Sometimes same. I go look at after the fact, like I look at, I do, I do a, a, a series of, uh, of AMAs, ask me anything videos mm -hmm. and blog posts around that. And some of them get like, Hey, 20 people looked at it in six months. Another one gets thousands of views, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so it's like, okay, well, why yeah, did one like, hit? And, yeah. you know, and, and so it's interesting to look at that just from well, the, data standpoint yeah, we do a thing every december where we run a whole month of uh, 
um, contributions from the community. That's the one thing that I do look at. So I kind of do look at that and see what's popular. And it's the same, it's very similar. It's the same sort of topics that I see year on year. It's the same sort of interest. It's quite interesting. I think AI will definitely be massive going forward. Though. Obviously, it is already. So of course. after build, yeah. having seen the kind of pre-build stuff when we were at the MVP summit, but yeah, it's going to even be worse now. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah. everyone's going to be AI. Yeah. There's, well, hey, it all demos really well. It's very mm -hmm. exciting. Yes. Yeah, it, it just, uh, I it, I think there's a lot of opportunity around the practical application of all those things. What does it actually look like out in the wild instead yes. of in that clean demo? Yeah, um, I, I always do have a little bit of, yeah, okay, that's like a nice flashy demo, but how does it actually work in the real world? Right. Me, me and you both know that it's not always as simple as what the demo it doesn't always work like that. No. Yeah, the funny yeah. thing is when you're talking about massive amounts of data, is like, well, what does that data look like? How much massaging happened in that data to get it to the point where you could show that slick demo? Yeah, I, I'd imagine quite a lot, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. And customers don't normally supply you data, like, no one nicely cleaned. And then, yeah, normally yeah. you get raw data that you have to kind of do the massaging yourself and then make it look pretty. Yep. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. It's an exciting space. It's it is. Gonna, it certainly it's is. Yeah. Change each of those areas. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change. You know, the, the Azure space is going to, I'm in the M365 apps and services is changing that world. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, I think in two years, you know, the MVP segments will look very different. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because Mark Rosnovich at the MVP summit got asked, what's, what's his 10 year thoughts like? And he's like, I don't know at this moment in time because it's so up in the air. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Even he wasn't really sure what the land, landscape's going to look like. So that's quite exciting. I'm Lots interested. Of new opportunities. I, I, sorry. Lots of new opportunities. Oh yeah. 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 So I, I do a, a monthly a tweet jam. Uh, so we're actually doing one this week on, uh, on SharePoint. Um, but I, my end of year, the December topic is always uh, like, what was the biggest news from the year behind us? And what are your predictions for the year ahead? And it, it'll be, there's so much that came out. so much that changed this, uh, with this year. Um, where we actually saw the demos of yeah. all the co-pilot stuff, for example, it I, it's going to be an interesting end of year wrap yeah, well, looking at that. Our CTO uh, Intercept kind of challenged us recently to start doing some calls every couple of weeks about innovation. And I was like, you, you wait till the MVP summit's finished and I'll come back and speak to you again. Obviously, I can't, can't I need to wait the builds out. Right. So I'm like, there's lots of stuff that we can't really talk about right now, but everything's going to change. So I wouldn't try and delve into too much innovation just yet. Wait to build. And then we'll, we'll kind of have a chat because then we can talk about it. And almost um, like you, 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 there's, there's going to be announcements and inspire. There's going to be announcements at ignite. It's going to be, I mean, there's just a lot oh yeah. happening. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you need to, uh, you know, folks, I know this is a question I get all the time is that MVP, like how do you keep up and, I mean, it's almost a full-time job just keeping yeah. up with all the yeah, stuff it's going it's impossible, on. I think. Yeah. I mean, lots of people read the, read the emails. I, I tend to just, like, put them in a folder and I'll look at them every now and again. But like, I don't have, don't have the time to go through right. all these emails. It's, I yeah. imagine it must be like that when you work at Microsoft. You must have, like, an inbox of thousands of emails you just don't have time to read. Yep. Um, yeah, there's a, I think you just need to learn to, to not try and be that person who reads every single email and every single thing. It's too much. Not enough time in the world. Yep. Great to do that. <laughs> well, Gregor, really appreciate your time and uh, and, and thanks for connecting. And I'll uh, you know hopefully uh, see you now that we're back to in person uh, uh, MVP summits. Hopefully see you at, at next year's if I don't see you that somewhere in great. between. So yeah, that'd be good. Thanks for having me on. All right, talk Thank to you, you soon. Cheers. <laughs>